Okay, guys, we are going to try to learn about the components of the generator. All the generators are composed for what is this? That back is the back end or the electrical side. Electrical, yeah. And this one? The motor. The motor. What type of motor? Gasoline. Or alcohol or uh, any 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 type of motor. Okay, in the electrical part is the alternator. You produce the AC current. And we know about AC current, frequency, amplitude, and the power, no? The output power. Okay. The frequency is directly related with the engine RPM. Engine RPM. Oh, I have low frequency. Let me I try to. No, no, no. Don't touch the. You have problems in the engine, and the engine is running uh, with low RPMs. Reasons for low RPMs in the engine. Bad fuel. What happens if the air filter is clogged? You can run. No, air filter. Yeah, is problem with fuel or air filter? That's it. Finito. It's supposed that the frequency is stable all the time. Yeah. And uh, this is the secret to calibrate the, the, the generator to keep the frequency stable. No? Uh, this is why in the, in the carburetor or in the fuel injection pump, if the generator is diesel, the, the throttle is locked. It's, it's locked. You cannot move it like, like in your car, man, more or less RPM because you increase or decrease the frequency. Uh, and it's crazy, no? In, in, in generators, look, this one is, is fixed, it's fixed. This element control that the RPMs be constant all the time. This element, we are going to talk about that one, is the governor, the governor. The governor keep the RPMs fixed in one position. That's the secret. Okay, that's the frequency related with this. The voltage, depend of what? Strength of the magnets, number one. Number two, the condition of the coil. The amount of, co of turns and the, the thickness, the thickness of, of the coil. Check the With the mega, you check what? The, the condition of the coil, the condition of the winding. For that reason, you, you, you read the mega in millions of ohms, millions of resistance. How much is the resistance of that coil when I apply a heavy, heavy voltage? Oh, the resistance is uh, approximated more than uh, 1,000 millions of ohms or less. No, it's less. Uh, yeah, yeah. That coil is... No, immediately you apply p load, the resistance goes to zero. Oh, no. Finito. That's it. That, that procedure is not only for back ends. It's for any type of electric model. No? This is basically, in general terms, the, the generator. We are going to try to install the generator. This is the generator. The generator need for a typical installation. Number one. Number one. Fuel. Fuel. Fuel pump, filter, and enter. Fuel. Number two. Water. Raw water. Why the generator need raw water? To cool, to cool the coolant. The coolant. And the coolant cool the engine. In your car, only thing in this. In your car, the metal of the block keep the temperature because the coolant surrounding the metal cool the metal, no? How the coolant keep the temperature of the metal down? The radiator. Because the coolant goes out into the radiator and the radiator with the fan in front reduce the temperature of the coolant and the coolant return. Mm -hmm. Ah, if the thermostat is open, the coolant enter and circulate again and goes out. And once again, and ah, the thermostat closed, no enter until the gen the motor reach the temperature and the, the thermostat open. What is the function of the thermostat? Regulate the flow of of coolant and keep the temperature in the range. That's in your car. The coolant go outside and enter in the radiator. Give me one second, and I show to you something. This is the engine. Uh, and this is radiator. the radiator. Look, one hose of the radiator enter here. This is the coolant pump, and this is the thermostat. The thermostat is located here. Okay, open and close. And the other hose is here. You see the hose here, and that hose return into the radiator. Ah, the coolant circulate in the block and the head, and goes out only if thermostat. the thermostat open or close. This is your car. And the temperature of the coolant depends on the radiator. 
Oh, the radiator have a fan. You see the fan? If the traffic is heavy, the fan is all. If the traffic is good, the fan is stopped because you have flow mm. of air. Uh, can I use this engine in my boat? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The only that you need to replace is the radiator. And now we are going to use, instead of this radiator, this element. Look at this. What is this? It's a heat exchanger. I have salt water circulating here. And look at this. The coolant enters here, pin, pin in a serpentine, and goes out here. Ah, now I enter the coolant here, and this is the return. I enter the cool this, ho this hose, I connect here. And this hose, I connect here. Of course, it's a separate pipe, and the raw water passes through the pipes and, and reduces the temperature of the coolant. Mm -hmm. I, I am going to replace this radiator for? Yes. Okay. Heat exchanger. The heat exchanger. Okay. And this engine is exactly the same. Okay. Yes, you can convert any type of engine into marine engine. You need? Heat exchanger. Okay. Heat exchanger. Okay, look at this other element that you need to take care in your, uh, in your boat. All right, look at this. This is your car. In your car, look at the exhaust pipe. The instructor, they cover it with this special insulating material to avoid that the students no problem, touch this manifold. Ay, ay, ay. This is an inconvenience in a boat if you have the exhaust manifold exposed uh, and uh, you are working in the engine room and you touch the exhaust manifold, you can burn. burn. Oh. For that reason, in marine applications, the engineer designed the heat exchanger, the heat exchanger to replace the radiator, touching the exhaust manifold. Then, when the raw water pass here, keep the temperature of the exhaust manifold low, like this. Come on, I'll show you. Look, here in the bottom is the exhaust manifold. The gases enter here, enter here, enter. and you have the heat exchanger. Look, you see, raw water enter here, and the raw water go here, and here the gases are mixed with the raw water, and bye bye. Look at the gases, 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 gases. Here, the raw water enter here, pass here, and go here, gases and raw water mix it together in that point. Mm. This one is this, exactly this one. All the marine engines, they have the same. What is the point, the secret point, when you install a generator? Yeah. Where is located my water line inside of the boat? Mm -hmm. Why? Because if my engine is below the water line, I can suction water. Mm. If my engine is over the water line, I don't have problem. Okay, for that reason, one point that is critical when you consider install an engine or generator inside of the boat is? Water line. The water line. Mm -hmm. And you need mark inside of the engine room with a Sharpie, where is the level of my water line? How can I know inside of my boat where is the level of water line? You remember when we install the stuffing box? Yeah those respirators on the stuffing box, you can install a clear hose over there. And with that clear hose, you know where is the water line and you mark. Magic, no? Okay, guys, this is the situation. This is the boat. And uh, what is this, guys? Heat exchanger. The heat exchanger. Look, the raw water, the raw water coming from the raw water pump and it enter here, the raw water pass here, and the raw water came here and enter in the elbow. The gases from the exhaust manifold are mixed with the salt water and goes out into the muffler and bye-bye. You remember that we mentioned what is the critical point? It's this point, no? Why this point? Where gases and water are mixed. Okay, pay attention. The level of water, the water line in my boat is here. Okay, yeah. My engine is? Good. over the water line. I don't have problems. 